This lecture is for Module 2 of Unit 1 on the vapor pressure of liquids. Consider a liquid in a closed container. Here we see liquid ethanol and it is sealed inside a closed container. You may imagine that there is nothing above the ethanol that the container has been evacuated. At any temperature, the ethanol will evaporate. You know that a, a liquid will evaporate in time. And as it evaporates, gas molecules fill the evacuated chamber above. This process continues until there are a sufficient quantity of gas molecules above the liquid such that gas molecules bouncing around the container are hitting the liquid at the same rate that molecules are escaping from the liquid or evaporating to form gas. In other words, the concentration increases until molecules enter and leave the liquid at the same rate or evaporate and condense at the same rate. The pressure at which this balance between entering and leaving has been reached is the equilibrium vapor pressure and that will be a constant pressure of evaporated gas at a given temperature. Naturally, equilibrium vapor pressure will decrease as attractive forces of molecules increase. As molecules are more likely to stick together. But it increases as temperature increases. The more heat or the more energy you put into a liquid sample, the more the equilibrium vapor pressure increases. The normal boiling point is the temperature at which the equilibrium vapor pressure is one atmosphere. That will be true of any liquid. So for water, the normal boiling point is 100. At 100 Celsius, the equilibrium vapor pressure of water is one atmosphere. Relationship between vapor pressure and temperature is described by the Clausius-Clapeyron equation. It can be used to relate two pressures, equilibrium vapor pressures, and their corresponding temperatures. So in this equation you see P1 and T1 appear for one vapor pressure and its corresponding temperature and P2 and T2 for another vapor pressure and its corresponding temperature. Note the equation has two forms, one on the left and one on the right, relating P1 and T1 and P2 and T2. Notably, the equation on the left has 1 over T2 minus T1 minus 1 over T2, the other one introduces a negative sign and takes uh, 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. In both, H is the enthalpy of vaporization for the liquid. The equation can be used to solve for one pressure, a pressure at a given temperature, if you know pressure and temperature at another temperature. The R that appears here is particularly interesting. It is the same as the R in PV equals NRT. In other words, it's the gas constant, but here has units of joules per mole Kelvin. You'll notice that this is a different value of R from the one you've seen previously numerically. It will appear here in the clausius clapeyron equation and at other points in this course. Here's an illustration of the clausius clapeyron equation application. The boiling point of hexane is 69 Celsius and the enthalpy of vaporization is 28.85 kilojoules per mole. 
This is the sort of value that you will see in a data table. What are the vapor pressures of hexane at 25 and at 60 Celsius? All right, the solutions to uh, both of these problems, vapor pressure at 25 and 60, will be shown. However, you have enough information at this point to attempt either one of these or both of these temperatures on your own. We'll first consider the solution at 60 Celsius, close to the boiling temperature at 69 Celsius. Here we have the Clapeyron equation. Convert 69 Celsius to 342.2 Kelvin. Your tip that you would need absolute temperatures were the units of R, 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. So we're going to find the pressure at 60 Celsius, which we might as well convert to 333 Kelvin. We'll call this pressure P2. 333 Kelvin is T2. You need a P1 and a T1, but we know that at 69 Celsius, 342.2, the vapor pressure is one atmosphere because that's what normal boiling point means. We'll call that 762 in this case, because 760 torr is equal to one atmosphere. This means when we solve for P2, it will be in torr. Right. Plugging numbers into the right-hand side in this case gives a unitless answer. That's good. Natural log of A will be unitless on the left hand side. And then we take inverse log of both sides. That gives P2 over 760 torr on the left equals 0.7557 multiplied through by 760 torr. And P2 is 574 torr. So if you lower the temperature from 69 to 60 Celsius, the vapor pressure falls from 760 to 574 torr. All right, now that you have seen this example at 60 Celsius, you should be able to attempt at 25 Celsius. Remember, we need temperatures in Kelvins. That's consistent with the units of R. Note that we convert uh, enthalpy of vaporization into joules of per mole against to cancel units of R. Here R is presented as 8.31451 joules per mole Kelvin. Normally you will only need to use the first three digits after the decimal point, 8.314. All right, here we have a solution at 25 Celsius, which of course is 298 Kelvin. Again, we want to find, we're going to let 298 Kelvin be T2, and we're going to find a vapor pressure P2. Again, use enthalpy of vaporization in joules, use the joules value of R, temperatures in Kelvin, cancel all units on the right hand side so that temperature is unitless. Take inverse log and multiply through by 760 to obtain the P2. P2 is 169 torr. Alright, we have seen as temperature decreases from 69 to 25, vapor pressure falls from 760 torr to 169 torr. Alright, the two examples here have shown us vapor pressure falls as temperature falls. The relationship between vapor pressure and temperature is the first example in this course you will see of Le Chatelier's principle. 
which says, if stress is applied to a system in equilibrium, the composition of the system will change to counteract the, the applied stress. In any system with, with liquid in equilibrium with vapor, the system in an equilibrium is a reaction in which liquid plus heat goes to gas. You have seen that evaporating the liquid is an endothermic process, as in the hexane in this example we saw in this lecture. If we increase the temperature in a particular system at equilibrium, we are disturbing the balance. We are effectively adding more heat on the left-hand side. To counteract the balance, more gas evaporates. This increases the equilibrium vapor pressure. Again, increasing temperature supplies more heat on the left. This, to maintain or re or reattain the balance, the system will cause more gas to evaporate, increasing the vapor pressure. It's an important point to remember that the normal boiling point is the temperature at which the vapor pressure has increased to one atmosphere.